the W King D8 Mini, the JBL Charge 3, the JBL Flip 5. You're probably thinking, it's just had the XB40 out, that's two years old. What am I doing with the JBL Charge 3? It's nearly four years old. Well, do you know, I still get people talking about the JBL Charge 3. It was a favorite of mine for a long, long time. It still gets a lot of loving across forums, across YouTube videos. A lot of people hate it, a lot of people love it. The thing is, it has its own character. It is quite different from the others. And I'm getting asked still about the JBL Charge 3. I'm doing a video with the JBL Charge 3, comparing it to the Mini D8, the Flip 5, both of which came out in 2019. This is a 40 pound speaker. This is a 100 pound speaker, but obviously it's more about the size with the Flip 5, as you can see. It's the form factor, I think, with the Flip 5. Uh, and its size. Bear in mind, it's a mono driver. This is a 40 pound speaker. Seems pretty stonking value at 40 quid. I'm not saying it's a world beater. Seems pretty good value though for 40 pound. JBL Challenge 3, eBay second hand, you can still get for about 60 pound. I am talking UK sterling prices, about 60 pound. So it may still be a consideration. If you've only got mm, about 50 quid, mm, another tenner or save a tenner. It still may be a factor. The old fashioned JBL Charge 3 still had two drivers making it stereo. Of course, as I said, mono on the Flip 5 was stereo on the W King D8 Mini. You can pair all of these speakers as stereo pairing. And the point about the Charge 3 is if you do not do the firmware update to Connect Plus and you leave it in Connect, that's when stereo actually worked on JBL speakers. In other words, you could pair them up once in stereo and after that, never have to go into the app. When they start up together, proper true wireless stereo pairing, they will link up in stereo. Ever since then, you have to, for stereo means going in to the app each and every time. So one of the more hassle-free uh, stereo speakers you can get with JBL if you don't do the update. This is said to be 30 watts. I've seen it written somewhere, but I can't find it again. I did see it written that it's actually 30 watts peak. 20 watts is the actual power of the speaker, which means 20 watts, 20 watts, possibly 20 watts. So there are many reasons to compare these and all of them be an option. The D8 Mini is the only one to have the latest Bluetooth 5. On paper, you're gonna get the best battery life if you play at maximum out of the uh, JBL Flip 5. Well, my personal maximum testing, four hours, approximately four hours, but I didn't test it when it was new. It's had a lot of play. Four hours, maybe it's five hours, would have been uh, as a, a new speaker. It does have the biggest battery. Six hours, 45 minutes. But bear in mind, I'm gonna to get to it obviously in the testing, it's gonna be absolutely related to how loud they ultimately go. If one goes half as loud as the other, same battery can last twice as long. Remember, they are all basic SBC codecs. You can submerge these IPX7 in up to one meter water, 30 minutes technically, but this is IPX6, meaning it will still be working after a sustained high pressure jet of water, but you can't submerge it. We'll say you've got the nice JBL form factors, very rugged, very knockable. Uh, form factor and covering, whereas this is hard plastic. If I knock that on my table, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna crack it. This is not a particularly rugged uh, speaker. I've seen it described as rugged, but that's that's hard plastic and that is not gonna take many knocks. In terms of weight, this is a lot heavier than the other two. Uh, 1.2 kilos for the D8 Mini, 800 grams for the Charge 3, 540 grams, obviously it's the smallest for the Flip 5. I'm not gonna beat about the bush. It's all about how do they compare, how do they sound? First test, my low volume test, 33%. I am trying to get the volumes as close as possible to each other, so I don't have to do anything in post. It's all about volume matching. Yeah, that means here, Charge 3 and the Mini D8 are at 29%, 36% for the Flip 5. <laughs> Thoughts get thrown around, but we keep going.
So it's the Charge 3 that actually has the flattest sound, surprise to me. Charge 3 in red, it does have a pretty big peak, around 11,000 hertz. It has that 150-ish upper bass boost rolling off, and then it has some lower bass, but it's certainly upper bass heavy. The least flat, the D8, the Mini D8, has the biggest spike around 150 hertz of them all, dropping away rapidly. Bit of a spike, two and a half thousand hertz, and then again around thirteen thousand hertz. So the main elements for most people are there, i.e. a smiley face, big bass, kind of big treble. The Flip Five has the best bass in terms of going a bit deeper. It doesn't have the big upper bass spike that the other two have, although it does have a little upper bass peak, but not compared to the other two. Then again, dropping away in mids, then it has its peak around. Four and a half thousand hertz, and a little bit again at the high end around eleven thousand hertz. But Charge Three flattest D8 clearly very upper bass heavy. But the Charge Three is the only one that really holds on to its mids. The Charge Three is slightly deeper at its base peak seventy hertz, but the Mini D8 three decibels louder at its base peak one hundred and sixty hertz. The Flip Five got the most bass at all at the base peak, which is minus nineteen point five. Three and a half to four decibels louder bass peak than the other two speakers. That is a lot. So it's you know the D8 Mini is a solid sounding speaker. It's not hi-fi, but it, you can't really knock it. Other than to say there's no real fizz, there's no real sparkle. It's dominated by its upper bass kick, so it doesn't go particularly deep at these volumes. But that 160 hertz boost does fill in some weight to the bass. The Charge 3, it still has its own character. There's nothing quite like it, I've heard. And you, you may love it or hate it and think, what, what's he talking about? But it's, to me, one of the most open of these Bluetooth type speakers. It's open and it's airy. That may mean nothing to you. You may just want to hear a bit of bass and a bit of high end, classic smiley face signature. You're not going to get that with the Charge 3. It retains its mids where most of these other speakers do not. Even though it's not a particularly clear sounding speaker it does keep those mids and that i think sets it apart it has a genuine roundish deepish bass but it's a very soft bass so you don't really get a sense of a weighty heavy bass you might not even get a sense of bass at all but it is there but it's its own character it's a soft sounding bass whereas these are more about trying to get as much slam out of you know either a small drivers or uh, the upper bass rather than anywhere else where well, that does go a bit rounder and generally deeper at these volumes than these other two 66% my, my real world what I call my real world testing volumes
Charge 3, Flip 5, the Mini D8, there are differences between each of them in the bass. So the Charge 3 actually has the fullest, deepest bass when you volume match them. Deep bass at 60 hertz, minus 30, minus 33, Flip 5, minus 33, D8. It's three decibels louder in the deep bass. The Mini D8 heavily slanted towards the upper bass, which does give it a lot more weight. When you do the AB comparison, it goes a long way to hiding the fact it doesn't dig as deep. In terms of the actual bass peak on this track, 92 hertz, minus 24.6, Minus 26 flip 5, minus 27 charge 3. The Mini D8 does have the biggest bass peak, followed by the flip 5 and then the charge 3, bringing up the rear. Even though the charge 3 has the fullest, deepest bass, it doesn't have the bass slam. Charge 3 does have a peak as well at 73 hertz. That's why I say it's rounded, which is about the same as the flip 5, which is a decibel up in the bass peak, and down again on the Mini D8. So the Charge 3 seems like it has less weight, but actually goes deeper because the other two speakers are more tuned to the upper bass peaks. The D8 especially, very heavy at 160 hertz. It is a real bass boost at 160 hertz. Nothing to do with the original track, but then it has dips elsewhere. The only one that really holds up in the mids is the Charge 3, and the highs are, are boosted to some extent. Flip 5 rolls off the quickest. Flip 5 rolls off quicker than the others at the very high end. Mini D8 goes all the way up to 20,000 hertz. Kind of the same thing again. This W King D8 Mini is a really inoffensive speaker. Maybe you're going to call it an all-rounder. It does lack fears. And by the way, I should mention these two first two tests, I'm playing in default mode because it's EQ mode, which you've got to press twice on the play button to get to. It's basically just a very bright mode, and it's probably just about going louder when you hit maximum volumes. So I'll get to that. No, the Charge 3 is, as I said, only one with that even tries to retain its mids. So in AB comparison, that could make that sound a bit thin because you don't get the weight of the bass because it isn't the classic smiley face. It's quite the opposite, actually. So you do get a bit of shimmer, a bit of sparkle, which you don't get with the D8 Mini, but you do get a sense of bass weight with the D8 Mini but there's no real detail. It's okay. It's a 40 pound speaker. It's okay. It's not, it's not creating a new frontier in the world of hi-fi. And the Flip 5 in many ways is something in between. If you can get past the fact that it's mono, it's clearly mono. There is no sparkle. There, there, you know, even when people say, well, the, the drivers are so close together, you're not really getting stereo. Yeah, you're not getting this, you know, 20 foot sound stage. But what you do get, even in the, at a minimal amount of the phase difference, which you do pick up. And to me, that's that kind of shimmer to the sound. It's a pleasantness to the sound. And it, while not creating a 3D sound stage, it does give you a sense of 3D imaging to, uh, to me, to the sound, which you're never gonna get with a mono driver. In theory, mono drivers are good when it's a very intimate uh, recording when it's not very complex. But maybe that's more the case with a, with a quality driver. Certainly don't get a sense of that with any of the mono JBL speakers. So that's the same. The Flip 5 is, you know, pretty decent for its small rugged nature. If you get over the 100 pound price, which is a bit steep for what you get, it comes alive actually when you play them as a stereo pair. Then it, to me, it makes a lot more sense the two of these very easy to travel with and you can get a decent sound out of a pair of them where to me you're not getting that from a single one it has does, does have a big roll off at the high end and even having that, that roll off is still still kind of can be quite sibilant um, the way it's been tuned so you may even find the charge 3 a bit harsh and lacking a bit of clarity but it's the mids really going to be a matter of taste it's the most open and airy and then what I mean by that is when you hear some of those female vocals and you can hear some of the, the breathing, some of the breathiness. It's the only one that brings out that, that sense of the female vocal. You might just want to know how loud they go. So 100% volume.
D8 EQ mode, charge three, flip five, D8 in default mode. D8 EQ mode loudest, on average minus 18.5, although peak loudest, charge three, 103.2. Minus 29, minus 28, 80 hertz, base peak, 150 hertz, upper base peaks, compares to actually a decibel louder than the D8 in its EQ mode. Obviously EQ mode is bass light, it's high end heavy, so it sounds bright, but overall Fit5 the same, minus 29 at 80 hertz peak, but a decibel and a half quieter than the Charge 3. It's also lighter in the upper bass peak than the Charge 3, but it sounds more balanced because, as I said, the Charge 3 is mids heavy. It's bass light, even though the bass is there, but relative to the rest of the sound, it's not as prominent, so it sounds more bass light than it really is. But most balanced to me, the D8, even though technically not as loud as the Charge 3 or the D8 EQ mode, in default mode, it sounds the most balanced. And as you can see, it's the most bass heavy. In real terms, minus 29, the bass peak, it's the same as the Flip 5, it's the same as the Charge 3, it's a decibel louder than the D8 in its EQ mode. But the big thing, the big up bass peak that it always has, is still there in maximum volume. Five decibels louder than the Flip 5, three decibels louder than the Charge 3, two decibels than its own EQ mode, means that it sounds more balanced because it's retaining the bass relative to the rest of the frequency range, which is still there, just on average, not quite as loud as in EQ mode by about a decibel, and doesn't have the absolute peaks of the Charge 3, but that's in the mids, which makes it sound a bit thin. So for me, D8 default mode, the winner at maximum volume. So technically, the loudest here is the D8 Mini when it's in EQ mode. If you can get over the very, very, very bright nature. To me, it's a bit ear piercing. I wouldn't want to listen to it like that. In terms of absolute peaks, the Charge 3 is the loudest because it's mids heavy. The Flip 5 has a kind of balanced nature at maximum, but that's probably because it doesn't go particularly loud, even though it's on paper that, well, rate still rated the same as the 20 watts of the JBL Charge 3. And going by these test things, I would say all three look like they're 20 watt speakers. But the, Ch the Charge 3 does lose, you know, any sense of balance at the maximum volumes. It's a bit of a harsh listen. It's too thin sounding. So these volumes, to me, actually, if I'm playing at near loud, at near maximum volumes, the only one that keeps a sense of it's still a, a listenable track in default mode, the W King D8, even though it's not the loudest mode. It's certainly louder than the Flip 5, which also keeps a sense of, you know, the complete track, but simply not going that loud. So actually, maybe overall uh, the D8 is, is the winner, but it's, it, to me, I, I couldn't listen to this long term because it's just a solid speaker and there's no sparkle, there's no real detail. but the, the, the track's there, the music's there. Uh, there's a big upper bass kick, which, you know, it does work quite well. It's inoffensive. It's good value, I guess, for 40 quid. And, I mean, if that's your absolute budget and you're not really got anything else that's, uh, you know, of, of a quality, and even the near a quality speaker, you're probably going to lo love this and say what a good value it is. But if you're hearing lots of other things, I hear more of what I'm missing than, than what I'm gaining. But it's pretty solid, I have to say, at maximum volume. Uh, yeah, I think it was the best listen overall. I still say the Charge 3, like it or hate it, is the only one with a genuinely open sound. It probably is the last of the JBL speakers where they actually tried to make something that sounded like some sort of speaker, rather than, oh, people just want a bit of bass and we can add a bit at the high end and forget about everything in between. And you get two drivers. Also sounds nice as a stereo pairing. It's the only one that really that has a sense of openness. If you're actually trying to listen and analyze a track, if that's your type of listening, to me the Charge 3 is the only one that does that. I'm not saying it's a fantastic speaker. Um, it's bass light, even though the bass is there. It's a very, very soft bass, but it has a different character to all these other speakers I'm hearing now that are coming out. So overall, you know, it's a matter of taste as, it, as it's always gonna be. But I've got to say, 40 quid, because you can't really even get these 40 quid second hand now. 40 quid for a new one, 80 quid for two. Uh, it's, it's a good buy, but it's, it's not a, 
it's not an earth shattering experience so maybe i'm a bit underwhelmed but i have to say the problem is when you listen to lots of speakers in a short period of time uh <laughs> you know i am finding that i'm listening for what i'm missing rather than what i'm getting but it's a solid it's a solid speaker nothing bad to really say other than lack of detail uh, lack of sparkle I hope you're saying at my video as usual and thank you for watching. UK.